Welcome to update 2.7 of the Stream Deck MIDI plugin. In this update, we have some new features for the script button and for the Mackie control button. The script button can show time information in various ways. It can show song position, project frame rate, and beats per minute. A command looks like this in its simplest form. The time command differs from other commands in two ways. One way is that only text actions are allowed. If you add some other actions to a time command, they will be ignored. You can, of course, use other commands in the same script, but for the time command, only text actions are allowed. The other difference is that the value reference has some additional features, but I come to that in a bit. This is the command in its simplest form, where you reference the value. When you do it like this, you will get a predefined display format with hours, minutes, seconds and frames. If you want the display in any other way, you can use key characters in between the hash characters instead of the value keyword. I have some examples. In this button, I have displayed seconds and frames and the frame rate. This button display hours and minutes. And this button displays beats per minute. And it looks like this if I play. For this to work, the song position and project frame rate the door must be configured to send MIDI timecode. And for the beats per minute to work, the door must be configured to send MIDI clock. The script button also has a new feature where you can reference incoming note values, control change values or program change values. In the previous version, you could only reference the actual value, the velocity for notes, the value for control change, and for program change, you couldn't reference anything. In this version, you can reference the actual note number, the control, or the program change number. I have an example, a script that will receive any notes with any velocities on channel 4 and echo the same note with the same velocity on channel 5. The value in the note field references the received note value, and the value in the velocity field references the received velocity. You can do the same for control change actions and also for program change actions, even though there is no third parameter in that action. The next feature is the last thing on a real Mackie control that the plugin hasn't handled before. We have an area with assignment buttons for VPOTs that is available in the plugin, but there is a two character display where the door can display information about the currently selected assignment. Whether or not the door will display anything there depends on the door. In the Mackie control action, there is now a new section for assignment display. And if you select that for a button, that button will display anything that the door will send to that two character display. So if I use the assignment buttons to change the assignment, the display in that two character display will change accordingly. I use Studio One right now. When I use Cubase, I haven't seen anything being displayed, so it's obviously up to the door to decide what to display on that two-character display. For the last feature, I switch to Cubase, since it's easier to see what is going on, since Cubase in the mixer with a white line indicates which tracks are controlled by the Mackie control. In the Mackie control for selected channel, there are now a couple of new options to select next channel and previous channel in the mixer. 
And if I use those buttons, I can step the selected channel up or down. In the previous version of the plugin, you could do a similar thing with cursor right and left. You can move the selected channel, but there are a number of problems with that approach. Uh, one is that we are actually not telling Cubase or the door to select a new channel. We are telling the door to move the cursor left or right, so it depends on where in the door you have focus. Another problem is if we step the selected channel outside of the 8 controlled by Mackie Control. If we do that, the selected channel is no longer known by Mackie Control, so we can't control it. There are buttons to move the bank so that the selected channel actually is within the eight tracks controlled by Mackie Control again. But still, if we move it one step ahead, we still will be outside of the bank controlled by Mackie Control. These new features for the selected channel basically combines these two actions. So if I am on the last track controlled by Mackie Control and press select next, it will move the bank with control channels with the selection. So the selection will never be outside the bank controlled by Mackie Control. So we have no problems there. And the commands are actually track selection commands. So it doesn't matter where in your door you have focus. It will always change tracks in the mixer. There is an option to deselect the currently selected channel before selecting the new one. There are some doors, Reaper for instance, that treat channel selection as adding the channel to the group of selected channels. So if you select a new channel, you will have multiple channels selected. If you don't want that behavior, you can check this checkbox and it will automatically deselect the currently selected channel before selecting the new one. If you are running Cubase or Nuendo and have a customized layout file, you need to change this because there is a problem with Cubase and Nuendo to move the bank one step and the layout file is changed to fix that. So if you have your own customized layout file, you need to make the same change there. So please check the bundled layout file for Cubase and Nuendo. Thanks for watching.